Hey everyone, so in today's video I'm trying out a new 3D pen because I'm creating some 3D pen art and really I was trying out the matte but the matte also came with a pen and some filament so I figured I would use the pen that it came with to make this 3D pen sculpture. This set is from 3D Mate. They are not sponsoring this video but I will have a link in the video description that is an Amazon affiliate link. Anytime I link to a product on Amazon it's an affiliate link meaning that I get a commission if you buy something from that link. So the mat is a big rubbery mat that has grooves in it so that you can use your 3D pen along those grooves to make nice straight lines or if you're doing a circle a nice round line. It feels super super nice and high quality and then the filament it came with was kind of all busted up. I don't know if it was just wound too tightly against that core because other filament I've gotten isn't wound as tight. I'm not really sure why it's all broken but in the Amazon reviews no one else mentioned that theirs is all broken so maybe it was just bad luck on my part there were a lot of tiny pieces in there that were just unusable <laughs> too small I mean I guess they're technically usable but you'd be sitting there every three seconds trying to stick the filament in and then you wouldn't it would interrupt what you're doing pretty much in the hollow center there was a 3d pen and the charging cable for it as well as a little stand for your pen and an instruction booklet here's a close-up of the pen it's a pretty basic 3d pen there are actually other brands on Amazon that have this exact same shape it's just like the same pen with a different brand name stamped on it <laughs> but so many of the pens are like that on Amazon here's a comparison of the three different 3d pens I've tried the top is digi hero that's another one that's just a generic one with a brand name stamped on it the 3d mate in the middle and then the bottom one is the Lix pen which is its own original design the Lix pen is my favorite so far because it's just very narrow and it's easy to get into small spaces. I do like that the 3D Mate pen is smaller than the Digi Hero. Also, the Digi Hero was shaped in such a way that it was meant to be held in a right hand, and I'm left handed, so that really annoyed me. But the 3D Mate pen can be flipped either way, so I can easily and comfortably control it with my left hand without having to hold the pen upside down. <laughs> One thing I noticed about this pen is that there are buttons on both sides of the pen and one set of buttons sticks out further than the other buttons, so they're easier to press. But the ones that are the easier to press buttons are the ones you don't need. It's the, the one to change the speed of the pen and the one to change the heat, depending what type of filament you're using. But the button you use to make the filament come out is one of the harder to press ones, so I feel like it should have been flip-flopped. That's very nitpicky, but just something I noticed. I kept bumping the back buttons by accident. So then it was time to plug it in and give it a try, but there was no base to plug it in, you had to use your own base, I guess. So I took the plug-in from my Lix pen and used that. It would have been nice if it came with an actual wall plug. I was really excited to test out this mat. And let me tell you, it is actually super amazing. It's easy to follow along the grooves and your pieces pop right out. It's so cool. Especially if you like doing very geometric things with your 3D pen, this is so helpful. Cause when you're trying to make something really 3D with a 3D pen, you can't just start spewing filament and draw up into the air and expect that to work. Usually you draw flat pieces and then you combine them or you trace around a 3D object that's the same shape and size of what you're trying to make. Here I'm trying to freehand a circle and compare it to the one that I made with the mat and it did not go well. The first one, the filament just started slipping, partially because I was on the mat, but I've had that issue too if I'm just working on any other surface that's a hard surface. So I attempted again and that time I was more successful, but it still wasn't as nice as the one that the mat made. Because not only does the mat help you get a nice shape it helps you be consistent with your shapes like if you need two of the same size circle you just trace over the same circle twice if you try to freehand two circles they're not gonna be the same size what I would do with that is draw the shape I needed on a piece of paper and I'd go around it that way but they still wouldn't be perfect so then I had to decide what to make with this mat because I want it to be something geometric to get use out of the mat and my husband suggested a house and I was like, ah, oh, maybe something more like a castle. And then he suggested the castle from Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. It's a really cute mobile game where you manage a little campsite and you get to decorate and do all the typical Animal Crossing things. I actually haven't played it for the last month other than quickly going into it because I think I finally lost interest in it like a year later. I played it a lot though for a full year, but I think now I'm ready for Animal Crossing Switch. Anyway, that castle is super adorable. I knew I would not get all the detail that that castle has, like the texture of the 
shingles and the bricks on the side of the castle, but I can at least get the generic shapes and some of the details. I wanted it to be somewhat to scale with these little figurines I have because I wanted them to be able to fit on the castle. I, I made the castle bigger than it is in the actual game because the, the one in the game is really teeny and the characters can actually stand on the ledge up top, although there is this groove, like a hollow area in the top, but I didn't want to do the hollow area because that just seemed like way too much work. And so the castle that I made is bigger when you compare it to the scale of the actual characters. So after playing around with circle sizes and figuring out the exact scale I wanted for the different pieces, I started constructing it. And I started with the main cylindrical base. And here I'm doing a very stupid method of making a cylinder. Don't follow my example here. You'll see a better example of how to make a cylinder later. But I just did one little circle with no lines to strengthen it and then did little sticks with no lines to strengthen them. And I did use a section of the mat that had little grooves in it so that there would be, it wouldn't just be a straight line, it'd have little grooves so that when I stacked all the circles, I could evenly space them out. But it was still just stupid because as soon as I tried to stick the circles on, it would melt the stick because the stick is so fragile and it would just start warping and it was an awful cylinder. What you should do is a fortified circle base, kind of like what I'm doing here and then use fortified vertical bits where it's not just one stick, but it's like two sticks with zigzags in between. You'll see it, you'll see it later in the video where I make a proper one, but don't do it like me because I ended up with a really misshapen shape for the base of my castle. An even faster way would just to take a cylindrical object and go around it with your 3D pen, but I wanted to actually construct some of my cylinders for this, and so I, I wanted to do it from scratch, I guess. Ugh, when I went to put on these top pieces, they just didn't fit. I had to build up so many areas on the cylinder so that it was at least somewhat smooth. It was awful. But then for the towers, I traced this little container. It's a little, they're little vitamin C tablets that are expired, but for some reason we still have them. And this was the perfect size for these towers, plus it doesn't taper anywhere. It's really hard to find a plastic container that's the right size. It also has to be something that's not gonna melt because I tried tracing over this travel sized shampoo container, a little bottle at one point, but the plastic was so thin, it all just got sucked inwards and warped. It was awful. So, you know, you need something that's strong enough. I like to build a fairly solid mesh for my 3D pen sculptures. I feel like it kind of goes one of three ways, a very open mesh, or a more filled in mesh, or something that's completely solid and smoothed over. Mine's not smooth, but it's very solid at the end, you'll see. So I like to really fill in the mesh of the castle, and then I'll do a final color layer later. Anyway, so here I'm building a proper cylinder. This is the good example of making stronger pieces and so I did zigzags or just air lines going straight across. The zigzags were quicker, so I started doing that. And I peeled those off and I attached them to my circular base. It's probably my favorite part of this video is just watching myself peel the shapes off the mat. This is probably the least satisfying of them all though because they're all sticking together with little hairs, but whatever. So then I was attaching them to my fortified circle, not just one flimsy little circle. This way it'll hold its shape better. And I put them all on there standing up and there's a little gap between each of them, but then I'll fill the gap in afterwards. First, I'm attaching the top to make sure that they're sticking out at the right angle because it's hard to glue them perfectly straight up and down. So yeah, put the top on first, attach it all, and then fill in the gaps. To fill in the gaps, you just string the filament back and forth across the gap. It's pretty easy. The only thing is this is not a perfect cylinder because it has a bunch of flat faces technically and so I would go in after and fill in some of the flatter areas to just build it up a bit so it's more of a cylinder, less of a, I don't even know how many sides this is, I think it's 16 sided. <laughs> so then I had to do the dome and so what I do for domes and cones and things is I build up a little stick in the middle and then I string the rest of the filament down. So to make the cylinder, I just go slow, like you saw, work my way up, and then I'll stop and shape it with my fingers to make sure it's staying straight. And because you need to let it cool off a little bit, otherwise it just starts to droop. And so I shape it a little bit, add a little bit more, shape it, and then we're good. Then I string filament from the top of the little pole down to the base, and while it's still hot, I shape it to be round. It's a very handy trick. Just make sure you don't burn your fingers in the process. Be very careful. 
working with a 3D pen is like working with a hot glue gun. You're gonna get a couple burns here and there. I don't mean burning yourself to the point that you leave a mark or a blister. I just mean it's like a little ow. So I just built up about eight of those shapes and then filled in the gaps the same way I filled in the gaps for the cylindrical part. My goal is that my mesh has small enough cracks in it that when I go to do the color layer, it's all not just gonna seep through the cracks. I want a solid foundation for the color layer. So next, I was building up the little square bits for the castle. I don't know what that's called. You know how castles go like this? I don't know what that's called, but it's cool. And that's what I was doing here. Because these are gonna get covered with a color layer later, I had to factor that in. So I had to have them more spaced out than I wanted the final result to be, and I had to have them smaller and narrower than the final result because once I add another layer, it's gonna bulk up. Here I'm taking one of my towers, which I had to extend by the way because I made them too short. And I'm doing the same technique I did for the dome, but instead of curving out the pieces while they're still hot, I just let them sag and it makes a nice cone shape. Woo! The reason I use these random colors for the mesh is so that I don't waste all the color that I need for the final color layer. So here's how it's looking so far. My little characters fit nicely on that top ledge but it just kind of looks stupid because that middle top piece is not nearly big enough. I worked so hard on it and I decided to scrap it. Also, it kind of looks like a, like a... So I remade it larger and with the proper ledge. You'll notice there's that ledge where the dome part meets the cylinder. That's how it should have been done the first time. And so I made it a better size and a better shape. Turns out bigger is better. Next, I had to make the little teeny bell tower bit for the top of that dome. So I just made a teeny tiny cylinder and then a cone on top, same as I did for the towers. Now here I'm starting on the color layer because I knew it'd be easier to color some of the pieces before assembling the whole castle together. So the base of the castle is this really light gray in the game and I didn't have a light gray, I just had more of a medium gray so I decided to just make the castle white. The problem is I knew I wouldn't have enough white filament to do the whole castle. Like there was enough white, it's just that I had three or four different shades of white and they're not all even. Plus, as you can see here, I'm doing a nice solid color coat, but you can see underneath it. The blue here is nice and opaque, but the whites just weren't opaque enough and you could see the orange underneath. And then the bottom base of the castle had a green, green and yellow base. And so that still showed through, but not as much as the orange. So they looked really different. I don't know. I just knew that Although I was doing this white layer, I would still have to go over with paint layer later to cover it all up. This blue filling is really satisfying, ah, especially because it's opaque, like the rest is supposed to be. Ah! Ideally, the mesh and the color layer would be the same color, but like I said, there's just not enough filament to go around, so I have to use the less used colors as the mesh. And here, coloring in the tower. Ooh, ah, nice. This step is pretty time consuming, yet satisfying. Just seeing the solid color go down, it makes your project feel more hefty. It's great. The way I do it, it has almost a knitted sweater texture to it because I do little circles to fill it in. 
and I don't smooth it down because that would just be so time consuming. There are people who do melt down the top layer to make it extra smooth, but you have to be careful. Like one time I just tried taking a flame gently to mine and it just sunk in the whole thing. <laughs> so I'm too chicken. I do smooth down little areas with the tip of my pen, like a little bubble sticks out too much. You can use the tip of the pen, which is hot to smooth it down. But in terms of trying to sand it or heat it, that's just way too much work. I already spent way too much time on this, like stupid amount. <laughs> I probably could have filmed like three or four drawing videos in the time it took me to make this one castle. And I kind of like the rough look. It's charming, it's cute, kind of, I don't know. It makes it harder to paint though because paint seeps in the cracks and then you have to wait a long time for each layer to dry. Once the color layers were down on this, I finished up the trim with the yellow, just thickening it and making it look all nice. So then I started painting it, and like the professional YouTuber I am, most of the painting was done out of frame. I was using this pearlescent white because I'm really running out of white acrylic paint other than my dollar store paints, but those have a matte finish. I wanted to use my nice acrylics because those have more of a glossy finish, and I know I could just do like some kind of varnish on top, but the natural texture of those paints, the finish on them, is just perfect, just perfectly matches this plastic because acrylic is plastic and it's just, it's just perfect, okay? I didn't, I just wanted to do it that way, but I didn't have a whole lot of white except this pearly white. And I was like, that could look kind of cool because it's a castle. The only thing is I only had enough paint to do one coat. And because the paint coat was taking so long to dry, I was also like, okay, one coat is enough. Two would have been better, but I'm running out of paint and I do not have the patience for this. Using a 3D pen is really fun, but it's very time consuming and I have other videos I need to make. Speaking of time consuming, this video is time consuming. Why is it over 20 minutes? <laughs> I'm trying to keep it really trimmed down. There's just a lot to see here. Doing the yellow details on these towers was one of the more fun parts of this, I think. It's fun adding details, yet it's nerve wracking because a 3D pen is not that precise and it's just spewing the filament out and you're right, you're panicking. You're like, well, okay, work quickly. And you can make it spew it out slower, but even the slow setting is sometimes fast. But I worked on the fastest setting most of the time because I got places to be. So yes, there's that ring of yellow underneath the little square bits. Only the front towers have those square bits. And then there's a thick base of yellow at the bottom and then there was another line of yellow, which I think I did later along with the windows. Yeah, here we go. Now I'm working on the door, which is brown because it's brown in the game. The only thing is it just looked kind of out of place because it's so dark and there's nothing else dark on the castle. In the game, it's nice and balanced because there's that hollow section on the top of the castle, but since I'm not doing that hollow section, it just doesn't look right it was just too dark plus my yellow trim is a very light yellow whereas it's more of a golden orangey yellow in the game I didn't have that particular shade of yellow so I used this but I don't know it just affects the overall look I guess I just thought the door was too dark so I changed it later here I'm adding the windows on the towers which again looks super cute the detail on the front towers just really make them look a lot better. I like it. <laughs> I did not film myself doing the lines on the windows though, but you will see that in a bit. Here I'm attaching the top of the castle to the base. 
As you can see, I didn't fill in all the white on the base because why? It's gonna get covered anyway. I could have hot glued this on, but I just decided to use filament to attach it because that's what I normally do for 3D pen sculptures. It's how I've attached everything so far, but there are some things I hot glue later on. Here I'm adding more detail by doing the blue line that goes around the castle. But one thing I did not add are the blue banners that hang down the front. It'd be a good way to add more detail, but I just, I didn't feel like doing it. I knew from the get go, I wasn't going to do the banners. They hang on either side of the door and it looks nice, but I just thought, oh, that's too hard to do with a 3D pen. Like I could do it, but I just don't want to bother. So I didn't do it. Here I'm creating little red triangles, which are for the flags for the front two towers. And technically the flags are on sticks but I decided to not do the sticks and just put the flags directly on the tower and just hot glue them on. I traced the triangle that was on the mat, but then extended it to be a little bit taller, but it was nice having the mat as the base to go off of. It was also really handy to get both of my triangles the same size. So the mat came in handy again. I thought I wouldn't use the triangles and then when I was doing the flags, I was like, oh, I will be using the mat. Here I'm filling in that door and I'm making it red because the only other red on the castle are the little flags and the little red dots around the top. And I broke one of the flags off while I was doing this. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. But yes, I thought I would balance it out a little bit better to include a bit more red in the castle. I also redid the doorknobs. I made them round instead of little rectangles just because I thought it would look cute and it was easier to do. So yes, here's a final look at the castle. I do wish the yellow was a bit darker so it could contrast against the white a bit better, but I think it's cute. Just don't compare it to the original one side by side because then it looks really bad. But in terms of 3D pen sculptures, I think it's okay. And I put all my little characters and stuff around it, which makes it look better as well. I had a lot of fun with this. Next time I'll probably have to do something a bit smaller because that was really time consuming, but 3D pen stuff is super, super fun. I'll actually have a link to my 3D pen playlist down below. I've done a couple things so far. I've done SpongeBob's Pineapple House and I've done Jack Jack from The Incredibles. So I'll have a playlist linked below if you'd like to see more of my 3D pen stuff. And I'll have a link to that rubber mat on Amazon in case you'd like to grab that. Yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. I can't believe I'm finally gonna live in a castle and live out my dream of being a Disney princess. <laughs>